All right, what is the pressure of a gas in millimeters of mercury in a sample connected to a water-filled open-ended manometer if the level in the arm connected to the atmosphere is 20 is 42.4 millimeters higher than the arm connected to the sample container um, if atmospheric pressure is 1.03 atm. Let's start by drawing a quick um, picture here. We have a manometer and we're told that the um, water is higher in the arm connected to the container and we're told that that height difference is 42.4 millimeters of water. We're told that the atmospheric pressure pushing in is 1.003 atm. They want to know the pressure of the gas and they want it in millimeters of mercury. This really boils down to one big long unit conversion. First, before we do that, let's just take a quick um, look here. Who has the greater pressure, the gas or the atmosphere? Well, if the arm is higher in this end, then the atmosphere has the greater pressure. So the pressure of our gas is going to be equal to the pressure of the atmosphere minus the height difference. So we need to convert into units that we can work this. Since we're wanting to end up in millimeters of mercury, I'm going to convert everything to millimeters of mercury. Doing that for atmospheres is really easy. We know that one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury because we've memorized that. So 760, 760 times 1.00 3 gives us 762.28 millimeters of mercury. Now we have to do our water conversion. We have to convert millimeters of water to millimeters of mercury. If you go back I gave you a in-depth discussion of the theory behind it um, in lecture. So right now I'm just going to do the straight out formula where the pressure exerted by the water, the pressure in terms of water, is equal to the density of water times the height of the water column times the acceleration of the water molecules. Same for mercury. The pressure exerted on that mercury, which is going to be equal to the, the pressure of this gas here, is equal to, or the pressure of this column of, merc of water here, or felt by this column of water, is equal to the density of water times the height of the water column times its acceleration. That would be the same pressure whether it's felt in water or whether it's felt in mercury. Pressure in terms of mercury is equal to the density of mercury times the height of mercury. What is it, big guy? Uh, can I eat my room because I finished my pizzas? Yes. Um, times acceleration. Now the acceleration is caused by those of those molecules and that's going to be due to gravity and it's going to be the same whether it's the mercury or the water. So it goes away right away. So really, we're left with the height. The height of mercury versus the height of water. So our formula, just to write it a little bit neater, the density of water times the height of water is equal to the density of mercury times the height of the mercury column.
Well, the height of the mercury, the density of water is one gram per milliliter. The height of our water in this problem is 42.4 millimeters. The density of mercury is 13.6 grams per milliliter. So now we just have to solve for the height of mercury. So we're going to divide both sides by 13.6. And, whoops, well that doesn't quite cross out. That gives us, I keep running out of room here, that gives us 1 over 13.6 times 40. 2.4 millimeters equals the height of our mercury equals 42 whoops 42.4 my uh, minus 0 42.4 um, divide by 13.6 gives me 31.17 millimeters of my mercury. So that's the height difference in mercury. So now we have to take that height difference and we're actually going to have to plug it back into our initial problem. Right, that 13.3 is going to go back into this equation right here for our pressure of our gas. So the pressure of the gas is equal to 762.28 minus the height of our column, 31.17, um, and that gives us 759. Point two millimeters of mercury. And they're doing it multiple choice. Oh, no, there it is. Choice B. That's it. Beep.